even without a project manager title, you often might find yourself managing projects. There are some key considerations that can make or break the success of a project. I had the opportunity to chat with an experienced, distinguished project manager who shares three common mistakes to project management. My guest, Michael Persaitis, is a certified project manager with extensive experience and knowledge. Currently working at an innovative company that helps high profile clients move exciting projects to successful completion. Michael's also an old colleague and friend and just an all around awesome dude. Thanks for your time, Michael. Now, in your experience, what are the three biggest mistakes to avoid with project management? So, so I think some of your bigger mistakes revolve around just you and the people you're working with not being aligned. So just general misalignment about where you're going. What is the goal? What are the expectations? And just any of those, those big, big rocks or big milestones or big expectations along the way. When someone were to say, hey, I need you to make sure that when we make the designs for this website application, that we'll be dynamically able to shift down from a desktop to a tablet to a mobile device, then if you just say, okay, then you already are making some assumptions. You're making some assumptions about what browsers this application will be able to work within because there's Safari, there is Chrome, there is Windows. Uh, like uh, Window Explorer, there's a lot of these different things. And when you get to mobile specifically, you're making a wild variety of assumptions just in that because mobile to you may be very different things. You might have a beloved cell phone that you got in the year 2005 that somehow is still operational. Yeah. And you were expecting that when you open up that application on that 2005 device, that it's gonna look as polished as when we created the design. So misalignment is just saying, okay, tell me what you mean by that and then paraphrasing, repeating back, and getting it on paper as well. So you're just, when you're like, okay, all right, let's define that. Let's talk about what that is. So we're saying it needs to be good on this and this and this. What are the parameters around that? In many ways, one of the, the key roles within project management is being the messenger. And messengers have a, have a poor history of getting killed. Um, <laughs> just, just because there is that infamous line, don't kill the messenger. Yeah. But what's so critical about being a, a, in that role is, is making sure that you get alignment and getting that information to the respective parties and getting consensus on that before you get started on the work. Because the worst thing you can do is start working under false assumptions or misalignment, deliver, and then someone's saying, wait, 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 this isn't what we asked for. And then if you look back, if you have not done, done a good job of making sure that you've got clear communications that you've got alignment in that you can see where the gaps are it's it's that he said she said so what did what did they say what did I say where is it written down and you can start to see where there are are blind spots and that's where you get into trouble and the trouble falls on the trouble falls on the entire team everyone loses but it's as it's it's my responsibility yeah. to make sure that that clarity exists and when there's room for that misalignment or those blind spots to look around, to, to check that corner. Uh, there's a show I really like that talks about doors and corners. That's, that's where you get, that's where bad things happen because you can't see around them and things, things hide in there or people make assumptions about what is around the corner or what's through that door. When that project manager, project manager is not doing their role properly, then everyone loses. It, you might be able to point the finger most critically at that person in that role, but all parties lose. The, the team doing the work did not meet expectation. The team that is waiting for that work or that developed work doesn't get what they want either. They're, they don't have the product. So you, one team did a bunch of work that is now needs to either be reworked or rebuilt from the ground up. And the other team has spent X amount of dollars, X amount of time working with that team to make sure they got what they wanted and they burnt time and money and are further behind than they expected to deliver. Yeah. So, um, one, one little story about, about a failure of this magnitude is, is uh, just that. Someone saying, hey, I have a tablet device and I want to make sure that it works for my device. And so we're like, cool, all right, so we're going to work against the, you know, these, these basic frames. 
and we shared said dimensions with them. And they're like, well, what did you base that off of? And we said, we base that off of what is most used or what's most prevalent out there in the world right now. And he said, great, awesome. And so we did that work and we built the designs to match those specifications. And the client was really happy and it looked really good. And based on our user testing thus far, everyone was like, okay, this is great, this is golden. The problem was that we did not do research into specifically the subset of users that really use these people's products. There was a very specific user group and they generally used very certain devices. And because of that, what ended up happening is we designed to specifications that didn't really meet their target audience's primary medium for using it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like a big, big learning opportunity. Yes, sure. big, big learning opportunity, big miss. But we said, okay, these dimensions are great. And we based it off of just of what everyone uses. But we weren't trying to serve everyone. We were trying to serve a very specific user group. And so a better, smarter question in advance might have been, okay, let's talk about your users. Yeah. What do they use? What And you as the expert, you as the client, you the one asking us to do the work, you know your clients best. So what do you know about their user specifications? What systems they use, what applications they use, so that we can design to them? Because ultimately, you're never going to please everybody in a quick amount of time. Right. And you want to build your work off of the people that match that 80%. Who's, who's most going to use this? Because there's going to be people that are outside of that or have edge cases that it's gonna be really challenging to satisfy. Yeah. And so you wanna hit the majority. When it comes to, to action items and projects, verbal agreements are great in the fact that, okay, we have alignment, we talked about it. Sometimes you have to have that verbal agreement before you can get there because things via text or things written via email, sometimes it's lost in context, sometimes it's hard to explain without a communication of an actual voiceover as well. So sometimes it is a, it's, it helps you get past that spot of uncertainty, of doubt, of, of just, of hesitation for somebody willing to, to commit to whatever you're wanting to agree on. The challenge is that if you don't also get that written down and communicated out, one, it is harder to socialize that information broadly because you might have had a conversation with one person that is part of an organization. And if you reach that agreement, great, but you need to make sure that that information is more broadly seen and socialized so that everyone that might be potentially impacted or care about that decision also has the opportunity to see it and get eyes on it and know where it came from and who was involved in that conversation. It, it doesn't matter if, if it is an internal project um, to just your organization or if you are a third party vendor providing some solution or some deliverable or some product to them. You're like, okay, you need product Y, we will build product Y and then delivering it to them. It's, it's any relationship where, where it is, there are more than two parties involved. And honestly, in some cases, it might be beneficial if it is just two people involved. But there are so many lines of communication, so many invested people or stakeholders related to work that you want to make sure that other people have the opportunity to see that. Because it can and will bite you in the tail if you do not broadly socialize that. One, one quick little story that I could share about, about that is <clears throat> that we had... A, uh, a great relationship with our, our key client. And he was the guy who, who um, was in charge of all the financial decisions, but also what, deter what, looked, what success looked like for the product itself. So we had a great relationship with that individual. We had verbal agreements all the time. And it was just a matter of, oh, hey, so-and-so, you remember that conversation we have? And they said, oh yeah, no problem. The challenge came in where we had agreed on what the next three months of the relationship and where the team would take the work would look like. We had aligned on that verbally. And it was written down within the pro product team's work, but it was not socialized out to the client's team and his bosses. And what happened it was in the second of the three months where we were well on our way to hitting the deliverables and timelines, um, they had a changing of staff. And the person who had been our primary point of contact, who we had all these agreements with, left the organization, and we had a new person in the organization. Oh, wow. And so it was a matter of where are you in track for delivering the things that you have said you would take care of us for us. 
and we said, oh yeah, we're, we're well on track. Here's the, the plan, here's where we're at with everything. He says, oh no, 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 this is, this is not what we understood where you guys would be going with the work. And then there were lots of crickets, lots, lots of very nervous crickets because at this time in my career, I thought since we had such a great relationship and that things were able to be handled on such a, a just a more, more handshake almost basis that I did not need that information. Yeah. And this was an experience in learning that even with the best relationships, yeah. you need that documentation just so, just so you can show someone your homework, that you, you abided by the P's and Q's, you met, had alignment, and if that's not where we want to take things anymore, that is fine. But the work we have done was done in good faith, and it was done in accordance with the way your organization wanted things to go. And let's, let's spitball here. Where do we want to take things now? But without somebody feeling like they are painted into a quarter on either side, yeah. because you know, the guy that we just started working with, the new guy, felt like we'd been running in the wrong direction. And, and we were like, no, we were going in the right direction, but we did not have said documentation. Wow. I don't know, it reminds me a little bit of that saying lying by omission, mm -hmm. because we, we did not in any way intentionally mislead them that, that we were going in a path that they did not want to go down. Right. We, we very much were working in their best interests with the partner we'd been working with, but that was, not, that was not structured and communicated in a way that ensured that no matter who was involved, that we were in alignment, and if things needed to change, then that's fine. That's sometimes what happens with projects, but, but it is not the failure of any one party. So verbal agreements are great. They, they're the silver medal of winning. <laughs> if you want gold, if you want the gold, you write it down and you share it. It's not, it's not a cover your butt situation. It is, it is just good program management, it's good communication, and it's good alignment so that you ensure that what you heard was what they said. So one of the other things that I think is really beneficial and, and I think shows that, I'm not a big fan of the phrase next level, but just a, a very tenured, very seasoned, very on, on, their, on, like on their business project manager is, is managing loose threads. In a lot of relationships, um, whether it's with your boss or your peers or even a client, someone will throw out a question or a desire or a need or an expectation that seems very passing in the wind. It's just, whew, just it's going by and, and oftentimes there's an expectation that someone's gonna grab it, that, that something's going by, somebody grabs it and we're gonna run with it. And even if it's not written down, it is in somebody's mind. And so there have been, there have been circumstances in, in my career where there was a thread that was loose and it's just this request with no owner or no action items or no timetables or expectations so much as, hey, wouldn't it be cool if blah, 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 or I'd really like to see this, blah, blah, blah. Just, just it's something that, that is not, it's not written into your agreements. It is not a assumed expectation. So there are these, these loose threads that almost pass by or could easily pass by relatively unnoticed, if not completely unnoticed. If you're in a conversation or in a meeting and someone says, that's awesome, I'd really like to see that. And we say, okay, it's just, that could be, I acknowledge that you're speaking or I will do something, very subject to interpretation. When it comes to loose threads, it is a matter of writing these things down and following up on them. Or if somebody initiated conversation and nobody responded to it, whether it's an email, a Slack thread, or something like that, just grabbing that and trying to put a bow in it because loose threads mean that it's not been dealt with. And you should always deal with threads. Even, even if it's a matter of, you know what, I don't even know what I was thinking, but it shows that you have the kind of follow through and observation and, and just eye to detail that really, really demonstrates a, a very on their job project management. Because you might've mentioned in passing, I write it down, come back to you and say, hey Ian, you had said in passing that it would be amazing if we did this. I haven't heard anything about that. Should we be looking into that or considering that as something we should be doing in the next phase of work or what have you? And they might have even forgotten it, but it just shows how much attention and care you give to what these people say. It, it, it shows that you are there to help them and pay attention and make sure that we as a group stay on track. 
and someone says, oh, I just remembered. Uh, I am working on a presentation for the stakeholders, and I really need somebody to send me some images for this relating to the product that you guys are working on. Say, oh yeah, cool, we'll send them over, no problem. And then it's, it's, it's what are the things you didn't hear in that? And so that is, that is almost a question to you, Ian, is there's this request for, I'm working on this thing, I need this thing from you, awesome. We, we had this loose thread of, I don't know when this is due. I don't know the timing aspects. Um, I don't know like what, what kind of deck are you building? Are you, are you building it that's gonna demonstrate what it looks like on desktop? Are you looking for something that has animations related to it? Uh, either way, all this to say that somebody requested this on short notice and I said, great. And in my, in my mind, I assumed that they would get back to me with their expectations of timing, with their expectations of breadth, of detail of what we we're exactly gonna show. And I assumed, oh yeah, I remembered it, it's probably far away. And this, so this thread was just, it was loose, it was out there. And I let, let that other party kind of set the tone for it. When it turned out that this was something that was due later that week and they needed something with some animation involved, something that would show how the mobile and tablet and desktop would, would look good together, how side by side you would not lose the, the quality and depth and user experience that you would get from, from as you downsized in, in screen. And since that happened, we ended up having to work crazy hours that one day in order to meet that expectation. And this was, and as a PM, that was a hard lesson learned on me, saying, great, awesome. Something comes up like that, just quick, quick note. I'm like, hey, you mentioned this very last minute. Can you tell me a little bit more? Because I don't know if this is a hot item that I need to adjust prioritization of all the things we're working on. And so we can take care of that. Or if it's, this is gonna be done at the end of the quarter and all I need are some screenshots so it's, it's a matter of seeing something and saying something. And if you do it in the moment, it's a lot easier to ensure that you are working with as, as much notice and information as possible. So, you, so the more time you have, the better you can plan. It's communication, it's trust building, and that's for everybody. Making sure that, that when people request something from you, you understand it completely and you can turn around and convey that to your team and also helping make sure to ask those powerful questions along the way that nobody gets surprised. Right. Said, oh, you need this by end of week. You also have us working on this other thing that's due by end of week. If we, need, if we end up having to do both by the end of the week, we can't do so within the amount of time available to us. Based on what you've told me, I would recommend we do the new thing since it is high priority, it's going in front of stakeholders. We will push this other thing out a week and we did that as soon as we learned about it so that we can build those expectations so we can say, okay, that's cool. Socialize that information. Nobody gets surprised. You get what you want when you wanted it and the thing that's late is late and we're okay with it. Not sure if you caught that, but the through lines to the wisdom that Michael shares for success are creating clear relationships and not making assumptions. What often makes a great project manager is the same that makes a great people or program manager. The ability to manage relationships. A big part of that is being clear and not making assumptions. Essentially, having good communication. If you have further questions about project management, make sure to connect with Michael Persaitis on LinkedIn. He's cool. I'm sure he'll be helpful. Thank you for your time and expertise, Michael.